So the first question, Abhiraj, which is generally asked also, is how to link academic question with uh, something that has social relevance. So this is very generally, very frequently asked question. Students are very confused about multidisciplinary aspect of uh, law, basically. See, I think uh, uh, the most important uh, response would be that there is no mechanical way of connecting a social issue or the social reality around us uh, to uh, an academic context, right? Uh, I would uh, say that stop even thinking of, of it as something that you have to do, right? Uh, my, my suggestion would be uh, stay with what has in some sense uh, caught your attention or piqued your curiosity or directly affected you or your family or your friends or your community uh, or your city or your state or your country uh, in your own experience, right? So uh, don't think of your, yourself as, uh, you know, uh, an empty vessel that is to be filled by uh, the theory and the knowledge that you're learning. Think of yourself and your immediate context as a rich resource for you to learn from. Right? And so uh, the first way in which you really uh, find something that is worth thinking about, worth talking about, worth researching and worth writing about is to really sort of let go of any preconceived need. I need to do this, I need to do that and just stay with yourself and think of, hmm, what has happened in my life that has really left a mark on me? When was the last time I felt really, really elated? I felt really, really angry. I felt uh, really, really sad. I felt really, really uh, afraid, right? Uh, and, and this, this is, we're all as lawyers, law students, uh, law researchers, we very quickly assume that our feelings are not relevant to our work, to our research. And I would say that we need to undo that learning, right? Our feelings are in fact central uh, to the work we do as law students, lawyers, and law researchers, right? And so if you really start with this open question, when did I feel really happy? When did I feel really angry? When did I feel really sad? When did I feel really afraid? And I'm just going with the four major emotions or feelings here. You think of a, of a number of situations. Right? Uh, for example, I felt uh, really, really uh, angry uh, earlier today when uh, I realized that uh, it's very difficult for my nonprofit organization to get uh, uh, a section 80G of the income tax certificate because the income tax portal in our country, which is all about digital governance is not functioning for many weeks. Right? And that made me angry. And just if I think about that, that made me angry. And why did it make me angry? It made me angry because I don't like the fact that uh, nonprofits or social welfare organizations have to wait for so long, have to jump through so many hoops uh, to actually be able to do good work. I don't like the fact that we claim to be uh, uh, a digital India, we claim to be uh, ease of doing business has going up, but in reality, it takes so long to get something. I also don't like the fact that as a citizen, I'm quite powerless. I can't do anything. I have to just wait. I have to just wait till the portal opens. Right? And each of these, in reality, has a research topic, a research paper, a research question, and an entire field of research inquiry located within it. Right? Uh, just based on what made me angry today, I can go to questions of what is the nature of the relationship between the state and the citizen. I can go to questions of uh, does technology actually solve uh, problems or does it create more problems? I can go into questions of accountability. I can go into very, very doctrinal questions. What is the right of a citizen under the Income Tax Act of 1961, right? What are the duties of the Income Tax Authority, right? 
So there's no limit to where I can go to, but where did I start from? I started from what touched me, right? And so I, I would submit that quite often, if you just allow yourself to stay with things that have touched you, that have left a mark upon you, it could be your own life story. It could be something you saw on TV, something you read in the newspaper, hmm? but it stayed with you. That is where there is good research to be done hmm? because Underneath anything, there is a whole a complex set of relations that a good researcher can unpack. Right now, final comment, quite often, we don't have this luxury of choosing whatever we want to. Right? I know the reality of uh, most law schools in India, where your teacher will say, roll number 1062, that was my roll number, this is my project topic. Right. Uh, so when this happens, and this will happen a lot of times, uh, a creative researcher will work with that project topic. My project topic might be, uh, mm, uh, let's say, uh, interpretation of uh, 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 the word state by the Supreme Court of India in the period uh, 1990 to 2021. Right. I'm actually not so interested in interpreting Supreme Court judgments, but my teacher has given me that topic, right? So if I have uh, the time, the energy and the inclination, I will approach that topic in a way that allows me to bring my research interest to it. And what is my research interest? It might be I'm interested in what is the role of a court in a democracy? Hmm? Totally unconnected to how the Supreme Court or at first glance, totally un unconnected to how the Supreme Court has interpreted the word state, right, in its decisions in so and so period. And what I do is, as I'm going into the Supreme Court decisions, I make it clear to the reader, to my teacher, to the world at large, that while I'm working on Supreme Court decisions, what is really at stake here is to understand how a court functions in a democracy. Right? So, so finally, uh, be comfortable with bringing yourself to your research context. Hmm? Sometimes you have choice. And when you have choice, I discover most students in India actually feel uncomfortable. They're like, oh my God, I have no idea what to do. Can you please tell me what to do? That's what happens in many of my courses as well. Right? Students don't want to choose. And... Uh, when they don't have choice, uh, students are like, ah, oh, I hate my topic. I want another topic, right? My solution to both situations is don't worry so much about whether you have to choose something or whether you can't choose. Something. Think instead of how can I bring my own personality, my own experience, my own emotions uh, to connect with this opportunity I have. And that allows you to connect the academic to the social. So long-winded answer uh, but uh, i think the first answer is always going to be the longest-winded answer <laughs>